Let's start our journey with two young and talented students at Stanford. At a time where the internet was just blooming, they were starting a project called Back. Now, who are these two people, and what is this project you're talking about, Manas? Well, those two mentioned people are Larry Page and Sergey Brin, who turned this project into now what is known as Google. Google is one of the most successful and innovative companies in the world, but they didn't get there just by being like any other company. They got there with one key concept in mind, and that was to be creative. Now, it's not the fact that they just like creativity, but it's something that they built their whole corporate culture around. When people like me and you see a problem, we sort of just adapt to it. While the people at Google see a problem and ask, how can we solve something that's never been seen before? Now, Google has a program where they give their employees about 20% of their time to work on side projects of their own. They empower them to innovate, and that's what leads them to such success. Gmail and AdSense started out as these side projects and became some of the largest applications within the company. What's even more mind-blowing is that Google has only about half the employees as Apple, but most of the time they always manage to keep up in pace. But how can they do this so consistently? How does a company reach this kind of success? Well, it's by giving the employees the autonomy and creative freedom that they need. Once an organization starts to give the employees the tools they need to succeed and innovate, the rest will come by itself. <clears throat> Why do I feel like an individual's creativity is always taken for granted? Granted, rants like this are usually recanted because some boss somewhere planted the idea that being creative is disenchanted. There's nothing magical about being different, they say. And they may be right in the way that days don't go by where ideas aren't stolen. Your boss owns you and your ideas, and the company is still considered golden. When the only credit you get comes from paying off a card, the threat of job insecurity taunts you, if only laying off was hard. You've got a great idea for top management? <laughs> that means the boss has a great idea for top management. When keeping your job means having to give up all your good ideas to your boss so he or she can look good to his or her boss, that's how you know you're at a never-ending loss. But doesn't that mean we've all lost? Maybe we're all lost. Why does it seem acceptably normal for higher staff to take credit for lower staff's suggestions? Why am I the only one asking these questions? If I may make a recommendation to the second-hand nation, it's time we all make our confessions. Admit it, you're scared to speak up. The power is highly distant and never seeks us. You don't want to lose your job, so you don't bother writing your own story. You need the money so badly that you'll let someone else take all your glory. Or even worse, you don't say anything at all so the company lacks. The competitive edge in innovation and like a failing student, that company is held back. And why are we so scared of change, when change is the cousin of success? Nothing more, nothing less, something blessed. Organizations organizing mess, sometimes changes for the best. We need to learn to accept. Managers should disclose all info that involves us, so that we can learn to install trust. Trust in our bosses, trust in our bosses' bosses, trust in our organization, trust in our creative creations, trust in work environment relations, trust in all of the nations, trust in good intentions for good changes. What's even worse is that we're taught in school to only have one skill set. Set in our minds, we don't mind being one and the same. Being the same is lame. You want people that change the game. Having a 4.0 GPA doesn't mean you'll invent a cure for the common business model. And that's the problem. The next Picasso could be working at a Costco's. And the next Wright Brothers could be a couple of white mothers. You see a Van Gogh selling cheap mangoes with Galileo and Borneo because creativity can't be graded like science or math. People are too convinced that there's only one path. People are too scared of their boss's wrath. Don't punish mistakes. Celebrate them. Reward successes and great failures. Fear immense inflation, not experimentation. Single ideas shouldn't even be tracked back to one person. With one person that isn't afraid to speak up, the group can expand and encourage that thought process, then process thoughts into possibilities and opportunities. Persuade the company to opt for community. Only then can the organization prosper as a whole. Everyone working together to adapt and embrace a common goal. People don't win goal just following meta. No more that's just how it goes. No more nothing to show for it. No more forfeits. Go explore wits, find poor bits, then morph it into something metamorphic. I know we can all listen, but try something else instead. Get everyone to learn to talk like Ted. 
No more bosses letting ideas worth spreading go to waste. No more cut and paste. We need space to think, time to sink. Don't let creativity become extinct.